All right, we got Fernando. Yep. First time using the slingshot. What have you been thinking so far? You did a few sets with 275 and stuff like that. I've really liked it. It helps set proper proper form here. Um, and really what, it, what I find it's doing, it's allowing me to use heavier weight mm. to create a better compensation in my body. Like my body will adapt to this weight where right. otherwise you can't do it outside unless you have a couple lift, you know, spotters or whatever. Right. So. so yeah, I'm on a personal journey to get to 315 for the first time in my life. Never been a big bencher. So Mark's helping me out here. What's, uh, what's the body weight? My body weight right now is about 205 to 210. Yeah. Pretty good bench, that body weight. Let's go. Let's see it. We got 285 or 295 pounds on here right now. Yes, sir. Here we go. One, two, three. Up. Oh, release. Clean, ah. smooth. I felt good. What's the most weight you've ever bench pressed before? Ever would have been 308 with but uh, bad form, you know, just. Yeah. Bad, it's still up. looking pretty smooth. So. Yeah. You know, sometimes people get a little confused about how to use a slingshot. Sometimes people, like the first time they use it, they get excited and they want to like really overload. We are doing a little bit of that today. And uh, I don't think Fernando's benched 300 pounds in probably many, many years. 10 years. Yeah, 10 in like, years. In like yeah. a decade. And he just e pretty easily handled 295. But the key factor here is we already got some good volume in. So we're going to just kind of keep rolling the dice here until... He can't do any more weight, yeah. <laughs> but we're going to, in a safe manner, we're going to continue to go up in weight. <clears throat> I think a lot of times, like I said, people get excited and they just want to max and they'll go from 225 and they'll just put 315 on right away. And then when you do something like that, you don't have enough uh, clean reps in yeah. the tank to actually help you improve yeah, that's right. and to move forward. And as you know, uh, being a longtime student of ATG and being an ATG coach, yeah. how important regression and progression yeah. is and uh, just kind of incrementally overloading or making something slightly more difficult kind of week by week. Yeah, you got to take, you got to take repetitions as skill building, you know, and this is a movement that does require practice. And, you know, I've spent a lot of time bench pressing when I was younger, so I have a base of that, but now not doing it for a long time, you still have to work your way up, gradually increasing that. Um, but like I said, yeah, what we said earlier, this is allowing me to get into new levels of strength, of weight that I've never done before. So I'm excited to see how this works. And we're gonna add like just a, a little increment of weight here. Let's what do we'll it. do is we're gonna add, we're gonna add a five, but we're also gonna add a two and a half, which is kind of a weird weight that it puts us at because it now puts us at 310 pounds. And, That'll be a PR. And uh, it, it will be a PR, which is nice, but it's rare for pe people to, like they wanna just jump to the extra plate, but I think we're gonna get this and I think we'll get the extra plate in there too. Okay. So I guess basically what I'm trying to say is don't be afraid of the two and a halves. <laughs> don't be afraid of using those fives. Like this is where the, this is where the progress is really at. Yes, sir being able to squeeze in and, and not even not even always doing another set, not always even doing another rep and not even always doing more weight, but just doing the lift better. Yeah, more efficient, easier. Huge, it's hu that's a huge less progression. Or, less, uh, less effort. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a great point actually. And yeah. Charles used to say every gym should have the little little partial weights. You know, oh those, yeah, those yeah, the, yeah, the even smaller fractional. Yeah. Fractional plates, those are yeah. awesome. Something that's like a, a kilo or whatever, right? Yeah, or, yeah. Yeah, or even less than that, half a kilo. Yeah. Um, Fernando ran a, uh, four, four, a four, four, 40 when he was playing football. And that requires a lot of strength. Um, what are some things that you did to develop that explosiveness and that type of strength? Well, for me, it was training through full ranges of motion. Um, primarily I would say the ATG squat, right? An ass to grass squat, balls deep all the way down, dropping the ego, allowing yourself to actually gain and balance out that strength curve from the bottom up, okay? So doing that, increasing my range of motion with strength, not just hypermobility, useless mobility, but strength through that length allowed me to then, as I got stronger, when I did my plyometrics, when I got on that field, I was getting something mm. out of that and was actually able to develop more and more plyometric ability because I had the strength to absorb it. A lot of uh, like hamstring work, right? Like Ooh, a lot of RDLs yes. and stuff you were saying? Yes. Romanian deadlifts. And so the two, the first two exercises that I did to like sky, like to 
jump into that progress from going from a 5-2 down to a 4-4 was the ATG split squat, which you can just drop all the way down into, which again is that range of motion, but going heavy. I'll do 225, 250 on that. After you learn the movement. After, <laughs> yeah, yeah. after a long time, okay? At first I was on a box, dumbbells, barely being able to do that. Like your foot up on the bench yes. type of deal. Bench yeah. was actually a great, this is about the right height. And I would, you know, start using one dumbbell, two. By the end, I'm down, flat ground, you know, start loading the barbell. But that then, very heavy RDLs, but really focusing on the quality of the movement, right? So it's really, perfect form I, I just always prioritized form muscle uh tension on the muscle mm. you know what i mean not trying to see how much weight i can put at the bar but how much effort and force i can put through my right. muscles and that was that dropped me down to a with the rdl level. how low did you go did you go down towards your toes basically um no i was usually flat ground for the rdl and i would get to you know with load i can get a little bit lower but i'd get about halfway because so you're just shy of touching because you're pushing your hips back so much that's kind of the length of the hamstring correct the upper hamstring right. portion really getting a full glute um and so then, you didn't need to go super low you don't need a deficit no i didn't i didn't need to those can be can yeah. have their places but i i didn't i would just Got the, I'm asking you this because I'm going to incorporate some of this. I want to get a little faster myself. So yeah, just I'm gonna start get using that this. full range. So go for like a parallel back. Past that, you're getting into something, some other. Starting into stretching and other into things. Into other yeah, things. Yeah. So you want to get to that full range of motion in the hip. And then you just maintain that and get heavier and heavier. Um, you did them with dumbbells or barbell? Barbell. Barbell. Okay. I did toward the end after I got a lot out of it the first month. I started to use things like bands. Mm which again, increases the strength curve at the top. So now you're getting, as you Pulling go up, against the band. Got it. as you go up, you're increasing that weight because cool. you're getting stronger as you're going up. So again, it mimics the strength curve optimally. So, um, but yeah, those two. Oh, and then definitely for breaks, uh, which you, you know from Ben Nordics. Yep. I started with leg curl machine, mm -hmm. um, but then a lot of Nordics really helped me protect my knee i would say that was important nice. for like striking ground striking like paul quinn used to talk about this a lot like the stronger the eccentric mm -hmm. knee flexion is the more force you'll be able to strike yeah, a lot of ground. downward force yeah, when you're having running. to compress that right. yeah cool yeah let's give this guy a shot um let's have you uh turn the slingshot the other way just for oh, branding yeah. purposes yeah shit we gotta we gotta get that logo out there boom he got so excited he just chucked it on any old yeah. way Will it fit over those tattoos and those triceps? Now I'm pumped up a little bit. But... We just need your hair blowing in the wind and this will be perfect. <laughs> Turn the fan. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. We got this. One, two, three. Up. Release. <clears throat> there you go. Good, good. You got it. You got it. You got it. Drive it. Drive it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the most way I've ever done. That's pretty sick, especially considering, I mean, you haven't, I don't think you've even said you've been bench pressing all that often I, recently. I think right? I've bench pressed twice in the last several years. <laughs> <laughs> so that was awesome, man. There we go. We got well, 310 pounds. See, and that was just the right weight. Yeah. I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people lift. So selecting the correct weight. Uh, is critical and as as you're going up in weight as somebody's getting closer to their max you want to have those weights be even more fractionated you want the weights to be even smaller so like when you're warming up in the gym and you're, and you're starting out and you you do the bar maybe a couple times which i always advise everyone regardless of strength mess around with the bar do a diagnostic of the body make sure you're good i usually like to do a 25 on each side after that and then a 45 and so on and in the beginning, you might add 40, 50, even sometimes 90 pound jumps to the bar. But as you progress, you see how we have smaller and smaller weights on here. We have a 25, then we added 20 pounds, right? And then we added 10 pounds and then we added five pounds. So that's the way you, that you wanna plan out your workouts as well. If you can bench press, if you're trying to bench press, let's say, um, let's say you're trying to bench press around you know, this weight for the day, this is 310 pounds. You want to kind of execute it some of the ways that we did for today. I actually had Fernando do a few sets with 275. And sometimes people might think that that would be a mistake to, to spend that much time. We did about two or three sets there. 
But what that does is it excites the nervous system. It gets you ready. Think about a sprinter. Yeah. You know, think about a sprinter getting ready for a 40 yard dash or a hundred. They're gonna do a lot of like starts and those starts are gonna be done very explosively, very strongly. Maybe not the same exact degree as what they are going to do when they go full tilt, mm -hmm. but they're gonna get pretty close to it. And they might do that for a couple of sets mm -hmm. to excite that nervous system. You might see them jumping a lot and getting fired up and getting excited and then boom, they go. You want the same thing to happen when you're lifting. And what I found with years and years of heavy lifting is sometimes I had to do two, three, sometimes even four, and sometimes even five sets of the same weight to get myself right for the next weight that was gonna happen. Yeah. I mean, it happened many times, even something like a squat. I might squat 405 for several sets of one, nice. just in anticipation of getting ready for that next weight, just because I could tell it didn't feel right. Yeah. And I wasn't really in it. Your body's not like fully amped. Yeah, and, I, and I've had it happen too before where I did multiple sets of it did multiple singles and there was still nothing there and i was like no nope. we're out for today we're Not just doing assistance now. exercises i love it and you uh you live to lift another day as they say so anyway that's uh fernando benching in the slingshot 310 pounds got a pr there yeah thank you brother. how's the shoulders and everything oh, everything feel pretty good totally good totally good yeah and um to say even like i squat four or five raw as mm -hmm. the grass always squat start with the bar always start with the bar Yep. You get down there, you feel what's up. Maybe that day you're a little tight in one hip, right. tight in one knee. The, the you don't want to find out with 405. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Don't find out when you're already weight there. Yeah. Find out when it's low risk. What I'm going to do is we're going to we're going to take the weight back down. We're going to have Fernando get in a little bit more practice because this is week one of his journey yeah. for 315. We want him bench in 315 without wearing the slingshot. So he's going to do a lot of his work today though in the slingshot. So we're going to take this back down to 275. And we're going to get a couple sets in there. Okay. All right. I'd like to see, I'd like to see about three reps here. All right. Let's do it. One, two, three. Up. There we go. Good. Push all the way through. Good. Yeah, you got it. Drive it. Nice. See, in the selection of the amount of reps and stuff that you do is really critical. The, the, the weight that you choose is really critical. I think that we could have Fernando shooting for like sets of five and we can really try to gut through it, but it's gonna end up with weird reps. Mm. We want the reps to be nice and clean. No, no weird reps. We want the reps to be nice and clean. Um, in CrossFit, I think CrossFit's done a good job of this where they'll say no rep. You know, and sometimes someone does a rep, but it just doesn't count. It's because it wasn't done with the proper execution. Yeah. And in lifting, if you, it's not like if you do a rep with bad form, it, it's not as if it doesn't count. It's not the same as doing a power thing meet, but you can almost nullify it because when you do a lift with bad form, you start to try to incorporate other muscles and you start to squirm mm -hmm. and move around. You're setting yourself up for injury, but it also, to me, it's telling me that, that uh, the input is a little too high. That's right. It's a, little, it's a little drastic for what we're looking for. And you know this, especially from sprinting. Yeah. Um, I'll just ask you flat out. Uh, when you did the 4-4-40, four, four, yeah. uh, how often did you run that fast? The, the funny thing is that at that time, I was running it pretty the th Yeah, it was sprinting the harder you try, the almost slower you're gonna run. <laughs> right. You have to be comfortable in that range. You have to have high efficiency in the movement. Um, talking about the squirming, so when you're sprinting, if your face is all <laughs> and, you're, and you're trying so hard, you're gonna run slower every time. So having a high efficiency in lifting and practicing that. If you start to, first week of a program, already squirm and use wrong movement patterns, <laughs> what's gonna happen in six weeks, you're gonna keep recruiting wrong pat, and that's how you yeah. said you get injured and all that. So yeah, the four fours at that point was pretty regularly, four four, low four five, I mm -hmm. was just running that. And so when I got there, I was obviously super amped up, took a little extra caffeine and I, mm -hmm. and I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't know. I just got there and I just went down, I'm gonna run as fast as I can, but also like just be relaxed. And I just did it and I was like four four, four I think it was four 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 and the next one was four four six and I was like, 
holy shit. <laughs> so once I did the first one, I was like, yeah. oh, I can do this. Nice. So I didn't have to go crazy. But in you know? training, you probably like weren't necessarily no. in that range except for maybe like once or twice. No, or I correct. I don't max out all the time right. at all. I would, I would work on starts, tons of starts, mm -hmm. tons of starts, especially on a 40 yard, it's more about the yeah, start. Yeah, it's critical, right? The, the, the last 10, 20 yards is really just a maintenance of the speed you built right. in the first 20, you know? So I would do lots of hard starts, but never, I didn't do a ton of maximal 40 yards, yeah. Um, and I would use uh, flying 20s. So you'd get a long distance to build up your speed. Those feel good get top speed, yeah. then time the top speed. So that was a good tool I used. But again, the full 40, yeah, no, very rare. Mm -hmm. Something that only test week, you know? Yeah, and that's the same, uh, very similar to the way that I recommend a lot of people do their lifting, yeah. you know, like uh, do various lifts. Yeah. You know, you, if you wanna increase your deadlift, you wanna increase your bench, increase your squat, utilize those movements mm -hmm. and hammer those movements and get familiar with them and use 80%, 85%, 90% a little bit here and there, but really just stay between the 80 and the 90. 90 is actually like almost on the harder side where you want to use that a little bit less. 80% yeah. is going to allow you to get enough, uh, get in enough intensity yeah. while your body also gets like acclimated and adjusted to it in a comfortable way. Yeah. Even though like we think this stuff's supposed to be so uncomfortable, of course it's supposed to be like a little uncomfortable. <laughs> But it doesn't have to be to the detriment of your form, your technique, your health, and so on. It doesn't have to be white knuckled. You shouldn't have to, you know, you shouldn't have to snort a bunch of, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, ammonia before you yes, go and stuff yes. like that. Like so occasionally, yeah, you do want to lose your mind a little bit, crank up some music and kind of go for it occasionally. But um, you want the inputs to be really, really positive and clean. Yes. And you'll hear that time and time again from like fighters. And I mean, fighters have, have it bad because they have so many disciplines and so many things they're responsible for. And so they can't afford, that's why you rarely see a fighter uh, lifting weights in a crazy fashion. That's right. Because it doesn't make any sense because they have too many other things to be focused on and worried about. Body can't adapt to all of that. It's too much stress at going time. on at one too time. Too much stress. You can't recover. So recovery is a big yeah. thing. So yeah, that's a good point. The recovery is if you're getting so ugly and overdoing it constantly, you won't be able to recover from right. it. Right. So that's the... Here we go. Another set of three. Yeah. All right. Here we go. One. Two, three, yep. Wow. Up and back towards me. Yep. Wow. Yes. Nice. So that was like the sixth working set. Yeah. Just to, yeah, give, we got, to give that context. Yeah, we like, got a lot of we got a lot of sets in here. And I'm gonna actually have you do one more. Okay, good. And nor normally I would probably like call it for somebody, but I think that the one, the reason why I'm calling for him to do one more set is whether you get two or three on this next mm. one, doesn't matter mm. because you already got such good mm. quality work in good volume. Yeah. And if you do two reps here, it's like, that's still going to give us uh, some good productivity. And if the third rep is like wishy washy, whatever, we'll rack it or I'll take it from you. But I still think you can do three reps. Okay. Yeah. Um, sometimes some of this is like, especially when you're not used to it. I had a, a friend actually text me yesterday uh, as a family friend and she's like, I can't bench press a barbell. And I was like, that's actually impossible. <laughs> There's no way that you're a full grown adult and can't bench press a barbell. Now she's a very small woman, but I was just like, so anyway, she was confused. She thought that in order to in, o in order for it to count, mm. she thought that she had to do eight reps. Oh, funny! And I was like, "Who told you that?" That's I was so like, "Funny." I was like, uh, "I would have never power lifted if he had to do eight reps." You know, that's like, cardio. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like that. That would be brutal. That's funny. But uh, anyway, she was able to do a couple reps with it. But in in trying to assist someone in getting stronger, I think sometimes people don't know they don't know how to like strain against the weight. Mm. 
And that's something, that's a skill. That's a, that's a learned thing. And you know this because you're mm. pretty proficient at deadlifting. Yeah. I think you deadlift over 600 pounds or so, right? At some point, yeah. Right now I can do over 500 pretty yeah. like any day, basically. Yeah, and when you handle, you ha when you go from like, you know, learning how to deadlift 400 to starting getting more into the 500s, like one of the things you have to learn is that it's going to go slow. Yes. And it's going to get a little wobbly and stuff. And we don't, again, we don't want the input to be super negative. Um, but sometimes, uh, sometimes these things are going to be uh, pretty intense. Yes. And you're going to pull on that weight and it's going to go one, two, three. And you know where the weight's going to go? Nowhere. <laughs> and on that fourth second or so, yeah. depending on how fast or explosive you are, that's when you'll start to see it moving. And then you're like, oh, shit, I think I'm doing it. And you're like, I think I could stand up with it. And you're like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, one of the most common points I see, especially with newer, again, newer, less experienced lifters is in the squat. You go down and they get to that, the struggle point mm -hmm. and they go, oh, I can't do it. I'm like, uh-uh. That's where you, that's where you have yeah. to learn how to break. That's where you start. And that's usually and where the just, client will get, they'll come back and get the rep correct. that they missed, you know, and, and they're like, oh, what's the difference? It's like, well, you just, you learn to push against it a little exactly. bit more. Exactly. Because it doesn't feel, it's a smart move by your body. It's trying to, yeah, it's going. Your body's oh. like, hey, like, quit it. You're maxing out, bro. What are you doing? Yeah. So within that good form, though, you can teach the body. That's why that repetitive. That's why the reps come into play. It's like, oh, hey, I can do that. I can do that. Right. So it'll start to get stronger and release those inhibitions, if you will. And you teach it uh, with the proper percentages and everything like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're also taking like you're gonna notice like we're taking pretty good rest in between the sets and stuff like that too, and that's to allow for full recovery. Yeah, definitely in strength training. That's here we go. Last set. Important. All right. One, two, three. Up. <clears throat> good. Wow. Nice. Wow. You got it. You got it. You got it, you got it, yep. Yeah. Nice. And just to give a little backstory on me, I had a lot of, many, many years, and a lot of injury in my shoulder from being quarterback for 10 years growing up. Mm. So, feel nothing in my shoulders. Oh, this. that's great. Um, obviously, also shout out to the ATG system. I have like full range of motion of strength training in that shoulder, not only emphasizing the partial ranges, but really mm -hmm. incorporating full ranges motion, rotator work. Awesome. Learn from Charles, big on the rotator, seated rotation, you know. Yeah. Things like that, so. I love this. I can't wait to see what happens in six weeks, 12 yeah. weeks. It's kind of exciting. Oh yeah, you'll be, his he, goal is to get him to do three plates. So we'll have him, uh, have Fernando bench in three plates in no, no time soon. Uh, if you guys want to pick up a slingshot, go head over to markbellslingshot.com and check him out. Uh, he was wearing the original slingshot. He's, you weigh about 215 and you're 6'1 or 6'2? Six I'm 6'1, six, six, like 6'1 six and a half. And, and I'm about 210, 215. You know, two, extra large slingshot. Yeah. For those of you kind of wondering some of those things, where can people find you? Fueled by Fern, Instagram, social medias, YouTube, and serponutrition.com for supplements. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later.